Now I know in reality we're all aware of why the likes of Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, Natalia and the Street Profits have just vanished from Raw recently when it comes down to the global pandemic and WWE finally testing their performers. We're not going to get into it here because it's just too crazy. I mean it goes all the way back to Roman Reigns who even did an interview recently where he said one of the reasons he did decide to stay away is because he didn't know how serious his own colleagues were taking it and he needs to protect his family. If you do not respect the big dog, I think you've gone loco. When you bring kayfabe into proceedings though, what the hell is going on? Wrestlers just appear and then they vanish and the commentary team who are meant to be our conduit to the action don't seem to give two hoots. I would like it if somebody gave a hoot. Unfortunately, this is nothing new for WWE and they love just dropping stories as if they're flies. So yeah, here is 10 WWE storylines that were just dropped for absolutely no reason. Why? Well, because Vince McMahon sometimes wakes up on the wrong side of bed and just changes his mind. That's not the catchphrase. Here's why. We will start with a recent one at number 10 and it pertains to Daniel Bryan because do you remember back in 2019 when he was still the environmentalist heel when he said I have a career changing altering announcement that I am going to tell you on Smackdown. We were all so excited because we're like oh wow what's it going to be and here I stand in July 2020 and I'm still waiting DB, I am still waiting. And even though Brian would walk to the ring a couple of times with microphone in hand, look around, he would then saunter to the back with Eric Rowan and he wouldn't say a damn word. Then from nowhere, he was a good guy and I was just meant to forget about this, but WWE, you seem to forget. I am a massive wrestling nerd. I mean, I'm wearing a He-Man t-shirt for goodness sake. I want to know, I demand it. So I suppose when you break it right down, this was just a giant troll. Awesome, brilliant, I love being a WWE fan. And let's not go too far back just yet either because number nine is the hacker. Simple question, where the hell did he go? Now this one could still be saved, but as of me saying these words, it has been four or five weeks since we have seen this hacking genius. And what's made even worse is the rumor was this going to be the return of Ali, but Ali has now been moved to SmackDown to Raw, which puts all of this in the dumpster. So I would guess that unless something major happens, this has been killed off too. But why does this have to happen? I would take anything here, genuinely, even a video with the hacker going, I changed my mind. I shouldn't have done this. I want to be a nicer person. That would be absolutely crap, but it'd be better than just poof and it vanishing into dust. And worst bit is, this isn't even new for WWE. In at number eight is the second time they had some kind of spy cam that they didn't follow up on. I am of course talking about the late 90s and GTV. Doing something similar when it was going around and trying to expose wrestlers for their lives, the only reason we know this was meant to be gold dust is because there was a boom in wrestling podcasts and everybody from the Attitude Era went, oh yeah, it was meant to be gold dust TV, but then we just decided we didn't want to do it anymore. Oh really? I don't know who I'm talking to. So we never made it to Raw, there was never any explanation as to why it did stop, someone in charge just got bored, and I had to be affected by it. And maybe most of you have come to terms with this now, but there are certain incidences where that's not the case, and I know this, because every time I mention the one I'm about to mention in at number seven, people still lose their damn minds. I am talking about King of the Ring 1999, I am talking about Shane and Vince McMahon taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I am talking about the elevating from nowhere briefcase. And if you don't know, the stipulation at the time was whoever did climb the ladder and grab said briefcase was going to be in charge of WWE. For some reason, weeks before this, Linda McMahon had just gone, yeah, I don't want to be the boss anymore, so I'm going to allow Steve Austin to do it. That obviously didn't sit well with Vince and Shane, so they all came to fisticuffs. If you need some context, this was also around the same time that Vince was being revealed as the higher power. It was me, Austin. It was me all along. Just as Stone Cold was about to win, though, he had climbed the ladder and he was going to grab the briefcase. Like I say, it just zoomed up into the air. There was more nonsense when Shane pushed both his dad and Stone Cold Steve Austin off the ladder, allowing him to go up there. And of course, then it just came down so he could get it with ease. So logic dictates that we would find out who was behind this, right? But no, it was strongly suggested and hinted that it would be the big boss man, but at no point did anyone of the corporate mystery look at us and say, yes, it was the big boss man. So this may have been Hornswoggle for I know. And let's face it, when WWE has no ideas, they always go to damn Hornswoggle. And we'll stay with the McMahons for number six too, because I, for one, there's that hand again, would like to know what happened with Shane's lockbox 
I still haven't been told. The central part of the feud between Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon and The Undertaker, which also made no sense, because why the hell would the dead man care about any of this? I thought the premise was Shane was going to take on Taker at WrestleMania, and if that doesn't go to plan, the lockbox was going to be revealed. But if it did, Shane McMahon would be put in charge of the company. I mean, that's why Shane returned. He said, look, Danny, yo, look, father, I can ruin you with what's in this lockbox. And everything went kaboom. What's even worse is that Shane McMahon did lose at WrestleMania. And then Vince came out on Raw and went, nah, you can run this show anyway. Sometimes I just want to take a gun and blow my head off. Number five is hilarious for the wrong reasons too. I am, of course, talking about Rusev, Lana, and Bobby Lashley. Because in kayfabe, in the story, if you were just a casual fan watching this, this is how it went. Rusev and Lana got married. They then got divorced after Lana had an affair with Bobby Lashley. And at one point, Rusev was really upset about this, but then decided he was better off, but he still made Bobby Lashley's life a living hell by popping out cakes and beating him up. Liv Morgan was then revealed to be Lana's lesbian lover, and then these four had a mixed tag team match before Ruru decided, I don't want to be a wrestler anymore, I presume, and stopped turning up to Raw, whereas Liv completely forgot that she was in some kind of relationship with Lana. That is genuinely the narrative. I mean, nobody has mentioned Rusev's name since. Liv Morgan's booking has been all over the place. Somebody please help me understand. We'll push four and three together as well because it comes down to WWE's obsession with phones and also taking phone-related storylines and once again, flushing them down the toilet. For example, in the summer of 2017, Kurt Angle was getting a bunch of text messages that said, look, I know a dirty, dark secret about you and unless you come clean, I shall expose you. Of course, Kurt decided that he would do this and it turned out Jason Jordan was his son, which was the stupidest thing ever. But I assumed that the conclusion was finding out who was sending these messages, but no. Corey Graves was also receiving these messages and telling the Olympic gold medalists, oh man, this is bad, what are we gonna do? Like Shredder was just gonna turn up and slice them all. But like I say, this never went anywhere and it was just dropped. So I'll just say it was me. I was sending the tech messages, why not? And each one said, I think Charlotte Flair is the best wrestler ever. Cause you're not allowed to say that on the internet. They go absolutely crazy. And that's why Kurt and Corey were so scared. They're like, oh man, we don't need the Twitter trolling. Following on from that, we have Natalia. Literally only a few weeks ago, as I am saying this, she had a massive fallout on the phone with husband TJ, who more than likely was going, Natalia, can you stop dressing up like a cat, please? It's really weird. But once again, was there any fallout from this? No. And now she's in a group with Lana, put the phone down, and TJ, well, he's nowhere to be seen. Because why would he? All of that is still better than the time that WWE gave Natty a farting gimmick, though. A damn farting gimmick. I think that sometimes WWE actually forgets what they have booked before, too, because why else would we have gone back to seeing the breakup of Sasha Banks and Bailey, when in the summer of 2018, we were all witnessing the breakup of, that's right, Sasha Banks and Bailey. It even saw the two go to therapy as WWE tried to recapture the magic they had between Daniel Bryan and Kane. And when they came out the other side of this, Sasha just went, oh, Bales, I love you. And Bales went, oh yeah, I love you too, Sasha. And they just made up, even though we had seen months of them falling out. They even threw each other into some lockers. Thankfully, I do think we're going to get a breakup soon and a fantastic match off the back of that. So now we can finally lay this to rest. But if you watch ups and downs at the time, you will know this almost caused me to have a meltdown because I'm a moron. Which brings us to number one. And how else could it be anything but the silliest thing WWE has done in 2020? Again, we will bring in the kayfabe for this. But apparently, according to their storytelling, Roman Reigns walked down the wrong road one day, ruined their wrestle. Mania 36 main event. So they called up Braun showing, uh, Braun, can we just like substitute you in to take on Goldberg for the Universal Champion? Braun went, get these hands, which of course means the affirmative. And instead we got that main event. That is what went down though. Michael Cole just randomly slipped this in to a card rundown on an episode of SmackDown. And if you didn't know what was going on in the wider world, you just assumed the big dog had gone awry. Why was Braun Strowman in this? Or maybe it was even worse. Maybe you questioned yourself and you're like, I think I saw a contract signing between Roman Reigns and Goldberg, but maybe it was just in my dreams. And then you ring your docs and you're like, oh man, I need help. So it was that classic WWE thing of let's just pretend and hope no one notices. We always notice WWE. We always damn notice. No of any other storylines that WWE just dropped? And my word, we could be here for hours. Let me know in the comments below and let's try to rid ourselves of this Kratius. Then make sure you like the video, share the video and subscribe to What Culture Wrestling. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this, follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for watching. I could actually stand here now for another five minutes and go on about all the things that WWE seems to drop and I just 
just don't understand why. Have they not realized how geeky we are about this and that we go on Twitter and we go on Squared Circle on Reddit, we go on Facebook, we go on Instagram and we just talk, 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 talk and then we try and connect the dots. We try and William Regal this stuff. You ever heard William Regal? He's really good at making kayfabe next sense but we have to come up with these absurd reasons as to why Natalia disappears or Roman Reigns disappears or Kevin Owens disappears and it makes us look like absolute goofs. Please stop it WWE. I'm begging you. I'm begging you from the bottom of my heart. It's not going to happen because it's quite literally been going on for 20 years but I can only do what a bald asshole can do and on that note I'll see you soon.